Hello, I am Iraj. Today I will try to explain the concepts of dynamic graph and uh, in this sequence uh, I will try to go through one of the important papers or famous paper in the dynamic graph area that is uh, written by uh, authors from Twitter Temporal Graph Networks for Deep Learning on Dynamic Graphs But before going into the details First of all, we have to understand the basics Like uh, how a traditional graph system How means uh, how we can apply a deep learning system on traditional graph And then we will shift towards the dynamic graph And then we will understand how the deep learning system will work on the dynamic graph so let us try to understand one by one so in the case of traditional graph we have just node and link attached with the nodes we don't have means uh, any weight attached with the nodes so in this case most of the graph neural network based architecture uses the encoder decoder based concepts In the case of encoder, we generally apply either node embedding or sometimes age embedding also. Once we get the node or age embedding information, we apply the concept of decoder and then use the information stored in the form of node embedding to calculate the link predictions or node classification or a lot of other features now let us try to understand in little more detailed way suppose in this graph we take the node A now to calculate the node embedding for node A in a very basic form we will consider the adjacent connected nodes so it is B, C and D And the node embedding for node A will depend upon the computation, hidden layer output, output computation on self loop, hidden layer output computations on all connected nodes, and then aggregations of the combined hidden layer output on this node. So, this is the general way but there are a lot of different different ways to compute the node embedding means here we just consider the adjacent nodes to compute the node embedding in some papers they have taken the second level connected nodes to compute the node embedding for a particular node and in some cases, people considered a subgraph, a subgraph which they assume cover all the information associated with node A in computing the node embedding. Now, in the case of traditional graph neural network based architecture, the node embedding to compute the node embedding for any node v we take the averaging and to achieve that we divide it by total number of neighborhood nodes into summations of all the hidden layer outcomes outcomes connected through all the neighbor nodes so this is the simple deep neural network architecture to know more about deep neural network architecture, its uh, specifications, its drawbacks, 
you can go through my video tutorials on deep neural network architecture now in the case of graph convolutional neural network architecture we apply slightly different strategy we use some weighted average strategy so this is weighted average and weighted average are actually computed through some structural component that we say centrality measures in the graph the simplest possible centrality measures in the graph is degree centrality means degree of a node but in the case of traditional deep learning architecture we take the degree of node plus 1 due to self loop so in this case the weighted average for no link connected between node u and v to get that we take the root of degree centrality of node v and node u which combinedly prepares the weight for a u v and then take the hidden layer output for node u and this way suppose we want the node embedding for node a in the case of graph convolutional neural network for node a then here its degree will be considered as 3 plus 1 1 2 3 plus 1 due to self loop so one self loop is there one self loop is there so it is 1 plus 1 one self loop is there so it is 2 plus 1 one more self loop is here so it is 4 plus 1 1 2 3 4 plus 1 so we can compute the node embedding value for uh, node a as uh, root 4 into h a divided by Here its uh, degree centrality is again four plus because we are taking self loop so we are uh, taking this part also and again we will consider b c and d so it will be like h b the degree centrality of h b is three plus h c degree centrality is five plus h d Sorry, degree central t plus one due to self loop it is two. So this is the way we can get the embedding for node A. And once we get the embedding value for node A, we can apply use this information and apply the concepts of decoder. Decoder may be some uh, by using some uh, uh, traditional multilayer perceptrons or some simple deep learning architectures. that will work like a decoder once we get the node embedding value we use those things and get the uh, node class or link predictions means whether a node x may will may join the node a with a link or not or some graph different graph representation tricks so this is the basics when we have a simple graph without any feature now let us go to one step next to this simple structural graph like we will add some features with node and edge then what will happen and after that we will try to understand if we convert this graph into dynamic graph then how the system will work so now with this node we have some node event and with edge we have edge events actually event terms are used in the paper that i discussed uh, and written by authors of twitter and in some other papers it is written as features so you can consider both 
Now we will try to understand what will be the structure of graph with node event, age event, node and age. So suppose V represents the set of nodes, P represents set of age and XV represents node event and XE represents age event. So nothing is changing with respect to time. So this is the static graph with feature. Plus feature. Now suppose we make slight changes in the graph. Like we are not changing vertices and edges but our features related to vertices and edges are changing means these features are temporal features so and these are static features so this is more near to like spatio-temporal graph. Now let us move and add the time temporal event with set of node and set of edges and then features associated with set of nodes and features associated with set of edges like that so everything is changing like node may change age will change the feature or event associated with node will change feature or uh, or uh, event associated with age can change so everything is changeable with respect to time so this is uh, known as dynamic graph so this is the different different varieties of the graph so in this discussion we will cover how the deep learning system will handle the dynamic graph with all those changing features Actually, a dynamic graph is highly useful in a lot of different areas like uh, social, social networking is uh, highly common because every time you can see in this uh, simple diagram provided uh, in this paper that I discussed related to temporal graph paper uh, that is provided in temporal graph paper you can see that a lot of people they consider people as a node, the connections or friendship as an ace, there may be binary friendship, some people just follow, so that may be one type of link, a friendship may be second type of link, some as information associated with a particular person, some associ information associated with the link between them. So a lot of information means all four things are present like node, age, node event and age event. And other thing is, everything is temporal, means either a user can leave the network, a new user can join the network, a user can leave the network and after some time they can join the network, a user can change their information, user can change the friendship. So everything is changeable or dynamic. Other than social media, you can find the similar kind of effects in the financial transactions or financial systems similarly you can find the similar kind of relations in the stock related relations and everywhere where some time or temporal things are present you can find the similar kind of relations